Yo guys, what is up? Moxie here with a Monster Hunter Wilds video, and today we're going over my kind of tier list of most improved weapons. Now, Wilds uh, is something that I've been really enjoying. I've been playing on my PlayStation now. I've got over 16 hours in the beta. I've completed hunts on every single weapon, and I've done hunts in World and in Rise. To me personally, Wilds feels a lot more like World than it does to rise uh, and in this video i want to talk about all of the different weapons their new moves and how they are feeling compared to their counterparts in world uh, this is not a tier list of the best weapons and obviously these are first impressions on the weapons and a lot of these weapons do not have the perks that they like synergize with we don't have horn maestro we don't have slugger three we don't have focus we don't have quick sheath uh there's a lot of perks that you know make weapons feel better as you play them uh these are just kind of base weapons base move sets and how they're feeling to me i hope you guys enjoy the video i hope you find it informative let's get right into it so to start off the list we've got dual blades um i feel like the dual blades are greatly improved uh from their counterparts in world for a few reasons uh first off like the base move set is very similar however the new dodge move that you get with dual blades is insane uh basically when you uh, hit your R2 button, you enter into, like, your demon mode. And while you're in demon mode, if an attack is about to hit you, you just hit your dodge button at the right time, and you will go right through it, um, which gives you, like, an immense amount of offensive and defensive abilities because you can stick to monsters and play super aggressive. Uh, the new, like, arc demon mode, like, flurry that you're able to do uh, deals a ton of damage. And the dual blades is like focus mode wound break that allows you to do the spine spin is incredibly flashy and you can like just do it over and over. Uh, I've been playing dual blades so that I'm basically doing as much damage as I can to a part. I'm leaving wounds to build up and then I will do my like focus strike uh, in order to do the like spine fly multiple times in a row uh, on top of that you can play very aggressive and at least in the like demo that we've got uh, you do have stamina surge three available to you which is definitely beneficial to them it allows you to play super aggressive on them and i've had some very very successful hunts with dual blades so to me personally they're feeling great and they feel better than their world counterpart uh, so i'm going to be putting them in greatly improved next up we've got lance now i'm going to be putting lance in improved uh, Lance, like, the very first thing that I noticed about it when I was putting it on and doing some hunts, because it was a weapon that I used after a bunch of other weapons, was immediately the damage that this weapon is putting out. Uh, you are seeing some pretty high numbers, higher than I feel like I'm used to seeing on Lance in comparison to the other weapons. Uh, its moveset and playstyle is, you know, pretty much the exact same as World. Uh, you do have some new moves. Uh, you can now clash with the monsters, which is really easy to do. Uh, you've got all of your blocks and all of your defensive abilities, and you've got a little bit more damage with uh, Lance in terms of just like how fast you can clear hunts. Uh, I feel like that was my big frustration with Lance in World was, and, and Iceborne was, you know, you had the move set, uh, but your damage was a little bit lacking. Your hunts were a little bit slower, uh, at least in my opinion. And it feels like Lance just on paper uh, is putting out more damage. So we're going to be putting it improved. Next up, we've got the Insect Glaive. Now, Insect Glaive, we're going to be putting in slightly worse. I think the Insect Glaive, to clarify, has a lot of new quality of life uh, improvements that you could argue is improved. Um, for example, the like focus mode wound break that you can do with Insect Glaive immediately gives you all of your buffs. It's new like combo that you can do, your charge attack. Uh, if you hit a monster in multiple areas, you can get your buffs back. And Insect Glaive does have a lot of quality of life improvements. They've made getting your bugs or your like uh, buffs uh, and maintaining them easier. However, uh, they've removed kind of the aerial play style of Insect Glaive. Obviously, your like damage on Insect Glaive was always higher for your ground moves than it was your aerial moves. But I found myself not really understanding why I would do any aerial moves on Insect Glaive besides for getting some wounds on the top of the monster and getting those free mounts. Uh, it just feels like a much more grounded weapon. It is doing some considerable damage. Um, but for me, personal favorite playstyle of Insect Glaive is Airborne Glaive. 
Um, and so I wish they had focused on buffing airborne style rather than it's like grounded play style. So if you like grounded insect life, you're probably going to love it. It's got a ton of quality of life improvements. But if you are an aerial uh, insect glaive player, you're probably not going to like it as much as you liked the world version. Next up, we've got bow. Now, I mained bow in Rise. I mained bow for a fair bit in World. And I think this is the coolest and most fun version that we've gotten of bow. Obviously, there were some crazy things that you could do in Rise with like the jumping shot that you would rain down on bosses. Uh, but bow has so many cool new moves in its arsenal. Uh, the tracer arrows work really well. Um, you're able to do the like hail shot where you rain down arrows and now it's an actual impactful thing. In world, you only really did it for like stun damage. You didn't really do it all that much in rise. Now it's actually an important part of your kit. Uh, when you're doing your charge dashing, you're able to do the like airborne jump move to shotgun arrows, uh, dragon piercer is like a much more impactful part of your kit. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the attack, uh, but the attack that you can, while you're holding bow and not aim down sight, you can load like five arrows in and just shotgun blast is really cool. Um, bow is just, it's so fluid feeling. There's so many combos that you can wield together. And honestly, the best part of it is the quality of life that they've added. You now no longer uh, need to like craft a bunch of ammo. You've got this meter that will just give you all of your coatings for free. Um, and the better that you're playing, the more often you can apply those coatings. And we've got Dodge Bolt basically baked into the kit of the bow um, from Rise. However, this version of Dodge Bolt, if you Dodge Bolt an incoming attack and time it well, you get your stamina back. Um, so you can just play super aggressive and super combo focused on bow, never slowing down, pumping out damage. Um, I have a lot of playtime on bow and I wasn't sure if I was going to main it in wilds, but after playing, uh, its version and doing multiple hunts on it, multiple solo hunts, uh, this is absolutely the weapon that I plan on maining, uh, and it is crazy in wilds. Next up, we've got the heavy bow gun. Uh, heavy bow gun to me feels improved. Uh, heavy bow gun is a bit of a monster in, um, no pun intended, in Monster Hunter World. Uh, just one of the most ridiculous damage output weapons to make endgame hunts pretty easy. Uh, the thing about Heavy Bowgun is it's a little bit difficult to get going until you are more endgame. Uh, Heavy Bowgun just early in the demo feels really strong. Um, obviously, with the Bowguns, we're not able to mess around with the mods on them yet, which is going to definitely be a big part of them. Um, and, you know, possibly putting on, like, the shield mods or anything like that and customizing your heavy bow gun, but just at base, uh, heavy bow gun with the rapid fire was doing a ton of damage. The new counter move is crazy. Um, it just pumps damage. Uh, it felt my first hunt using it just felt kind of unfair, <laughs> honestly, compared to some of the other weapons. Um, I'm not putting it in greatly improved because like it's still heavy bow gun and it got some nice things. Um, but I don't think it's like as standout ish to me personally as like dual blades and bow. Next up, we got Longsword. Oh, Longsword is pretty freaking insane in Wilds. It got some crazy new moves and quality of life. Um, one of the big things is the new, like, part two of Helmbreaker. Uh, after you Helmbreaker, you're able to do a secondary, like, follow-up move that just does a ton of damage. It consumes an additional bar uh, of your, like, spirit bar on Longsword. However, if you're landing it, like there's no reason not to proc it. Uh, you can now cancel Helmbreak if you don't want to use it and you don't consume bar. Uh, so it's like less risky to use. We've also got the new attack. I'm blanking on the name of it, where instead of having to land multiple spirit slashes in a row to get to the next bar, uh, which was a little awkward sometimes in certain monster fights, you can now hold up and charge the weapon with your R2 button and then basically wind it around and do a big slash, which instantly gives you another rank on your like spirit gauge which is crazy uh the big downside to that by the way is that you can't cancel it and go into like a force light slash or something so if you're gonna do it you're absolutely more vulnerable it's probably the most vulnerable you can be on longsword uh because if something comes at you there's nothing you can do really to get out of the way of it but if you've got a, like a, a time to do it uh and you know the monster's move set uh you're able to pull that off and get ranks on your longsword faster than you ever could plus you can still get ranks with foresight slash um Longsword just feels very much in its element. Uh, you can play super aggressive with it. You can 
spam helm breakers uh as much as you could before uh but it's also got like some new moves you can also like combo the spirit slashes even more uh into themselves whereas before in like world after you were done doing your like spirit slashes once at the end of the combo you had to kind of like sheath the weapon now you can kind of just keep going uh which is crazy so if you're doing your like draw slashes you can keep building up your bar uh it just seems like a very very powerful weapon and even better than uh in world which is crazy because it was so so powerful and i think the most used weapon in world uh, i think it's going to be another like fan favorite uh in wilds next we get to talk about hammer now hammer you could argue for greatly improved or improved i'm gonna be putting it improved uh hammer got a few really awesome things first off focus mode um the big attack the like hammer's big bang attack that you do requires you to make contact with a monster to have the hits follow up if you miss the monster at any point during the combo this is not just in wilds this is in like world as well but if you miss the monster with your big bang combo the attack just stops and you don't get to the end attack which does a tremendous amount of damage um but now with focus mode, it's very easy to not miss any swings of your big bang, like if the monster's head is shifting around on the ground. Uh, so that is incredible for it. You can now dash while you're charging the hammer. Before, when you're charging the hammer, you're very susceptible to attacks. Now you've got this like rise like basically grapple that you can do while you're charging it uh, to get out of harm's way, which is incredible. And Hammer's new, like, kind of finishing move, like, it's big ultimate slam. I don't know the name of it, uh, but basically, after you fully charge your hammer with your R2, you can hit R2 triangle and kind of do this, like, swinging animation where you walk up to a monster and just nail it. Uh, and this was dealing, like, TCS damage, uh, levels of damage, if not higher. Uh, it takes a while to load up, but... If you're landing it consistently, you are pumping out some serious damage with Hammer. Um, and so Hammer, to me, is definitely improved. I think it's a better version than it was in World. It doesn't have, like, some total game changers for it, uh, like some of these other top weapons do. But it is definitely better, in my opinion, than its performance in World. Next up, we've got Sword and Shield. Uh, we're going to be putting Sword and Shield in Improved. By the way, these weapons, we're not doing, like, left to right. It's just you know, whatever we're putting them in the category. It's not like the dual blades are more improved than the bow. Just wanted to point that out. Uh, but we're going to be putting the sword and shield in improved. Uh, it feels better to me than the world version. You've got so many, like, things at your tooltips. Uh, obviously, you still maintain the, like, nice quality of life that sword and shield has, where you can, like, use your items without having to put away the weapon. But Sword and Shield's new move set, uh, its ability to like really do some crazy aerial play, it almost feels like a more aerial weapon than Insect Glaive, uh, and also the damage that you're dealing. Uh, Sword and Shield is seems very good at doing wounds, uh, where you can do these like concentrated like stabs that you just rip down on monsters that are doing a bunch of different numbers. I think it was like five different damage instances on monsters. Uh, I was noticing just a really easy time with wounds with Sword and Shield. I think it's going to be really strong once we get elements and status effects. Uh, obviously, like we didn't have that in the beta. It's just like a raw weapon, uh, but Sword and Shield... Not something I've played too much in World, so I can't speak too much about it, uh, but it was feeling very, very strong in Wilds. Next up, we've got Gunlands. Now, Gunlands is a weapon that I am considering, heavily considering playing in uh, Wilds. Uh, to me, honestly, this might be the biggest glow up out of any of the weapons. Not Once again, this order doesn't matter, but like... Uh, Gunlance feels disgusting. I tried Gunlance in World, and it felt awkward, it felt clunky, um, and I knew it was good, but it just didn't feel good to use, in my opinion. Um, just in base, like, we don't have, like, the artillery skills or anything like that in the demo, but Gunlance's damage output and its combo potential is disgusting. You can do these, like, multi-combo attacks where you're doing this like full like side swiping blast that's doing a bunch of damage and then you follow that into the worm stake and then you can follow that into another side sweep after an instant reload into another worm stake into like the full charge wyvern which if you do that full combo then you're like big long range explosion attack i think it's called like wyvern fire uh it charges up almost instantly if you land that full combo 
It feels very offensive. It is definitely not as a defensive weapon as Lance. Your defensive capabilities are basically just holding the block button. Uh, so you do take like a fair bit of chip damage while you're using it. Uh, obviously, we don't have like the like block skills quite yet. But the damage output and the like offensive potential of Gun Lance feels really strong in wilds uh, it's also just a very flashy weapon um your like full wyvern blast does this massive explosion that lights the grass on fire uh it travels quite a fair bit of distance and it was uh some of the weapons don't feel as impactful uh as they did in world the impact of gun lance was feeling really good uh so we're going to be putting it in greatly improved next up we've got light bow gun now to me personally uh light bow gun Definitely improved, but it's personally just not a play style that I very much enjoy, uh, to be honest. With Light Bowgun, they've added some new moves that you're basically, while you're doing all of your fast shooting, uh, you can take time instead of doing a fast shot and following up with more fast shots and more fast shots. You can kind of take a pause to do this kind of... Uh, I think they, I forget the exact name of it, like a counter shot where you're going to deal more damage on the shot, but you've got a longer recovery animation. So if you've got an opening, you can go shot to counter shot, shot to counter shot. That feels a little bit like bow play style. Um, and then you've also got some new moves in your arsenal. You've got like the like offset attack. Uh, you've got the like kind of circle button to do the like ignition where you can just pump uh out even more damage um and light bow gun is feeling pretty nice uh it's not a weapon that i personally enjoy all that much just because it feels a little too repetitive for me uh but if you like that like on the move play style it feels a little bit more like bow now personally without kind of all the flashy moves uh so we're gonna be putting it in improved next up we've got great sword great sword is a tough one to place personally uh because it's got a lot of pluses and a lot of minuses um, and where it nets out is going to be kind of up to you. To me personally, it feels a little bit worse. And I want to explain that because there's a lot of great things going for Greatsword. Uh, first off, with TCSs, the like focus mode is a game changer. Being able to freely aim Greatsword is such a game changer. And you're now able to do during your TCS, the like first soft hit that you can do. You can do that soft hit and then 180 around and then do the big hit. So for like wake ups, you no longer have to do that like weird spacing where you were like weren't trying to land the part, the little attack to get the double damage. You can now basically guarantee that like big hit to always land on monsters for wake ups. Uh, my first hunt with Greatsword, I didn't miss a single TCS. That's not like a brag. It's just way easier to hit being able to rotate all the time. Uh, and you can also do your shoulder tackles. Greatsword's got a new offset attack that's really satisfying that you can charge up. Um, Greatsword in like its uh in its kit feels great. The thing that's not feeling great about Greatsword, weirdly enough, is TCS. Um, your true charge slash is just not hitting as hard uh as some of these other weapons attacks, which I found very weird. Uh, even when you're doing your full combo, um TCS wasn't putting out some of the same numbers that I was seeing uh, on, like, for example, Hammer or sometimes even Wound Breaks with Light Bow Gun. Um, and the other thing is Greatsword just feels way less impactful to me. Um, in World, when you were going into your TCS, uh, maybe this has changed, maybe this will change, but you had basically the feeling of throwing an 18-wheeler at a monster and colliding with their head. There was this huge slowdown. There was this impact. There was particles, um, and it felt so weighty. And in Wilds, that just doesn't really exist. Uh, if you've played it, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It doesn't have that same amount of weight behind it when you're hitting monsters with the TCS. It doesn't have that like kind of POV zoom in. It doesn't have the particle effects. I think it might have been something that was sacrificed for performance. Maybe we'll see it return. Uh, but to me, even though Greatsword is definitely dishing out a ton of damage, like that's not to say it's a weak weapon. It is incredibly strong. I had some of my fastest hunts with Greatsword. It just didn't feel as impactful to me. And that's what I'm looking for on Greatsword. I want that weight. I want that impact. Um, and so for me, it feels slightly worse, but not in the like the damage department, mainly just in the weapon feel. Real quick, just to show you that I'm not crazy. This was a video that was posted like a few months ago, um, and it kind of highlights my point. Obviously, this video was like posted as a meme, but I want to show you something. So this is the TCS in Wilds where you are, you know, you're bringing this weapon around 
and there's not like your weapons like slightly glowing there's not really any particle effects uh it kind of just like slices through the monster and there's not too much going on you know there's a slight pov zoom in there's a slight glow nothing is really happening on the monster where it impacts and now uh, i want you to see what it looks like in world um to do a like world tcs just for example uh this video was like they just put like a nuke effect but i want to show you this so here comes the tcs look at the way the weapon uh is impacting the monster it's like dropping a nuke on them. Uh, and then here comes the big hit. And your wep like your entire weapon is glowing. There's like this like blur. There's this effect. All these things are added to make the weapon. The, the like gif here is that it drops a nuke. But all of these things are added to make it feel like you're hitting the monster with a freaking truck. You know what I mean? Like these huge slashes, these particle effects, all the glow. And when we compare that to Wilds, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about where like, you know, it just, it has none of that. You don't see, you don't see the slashes. You don't see the explosion. There's not the crazy glow. The impact isn't quite as there. And so for me, uh, I think that Greatsword feels worse, even though it's performing better, just the weapon feel is worse. So that's why I ranked it where I did. Next up, we've got Charge Blade. Uh, now, Charge Blade was the weapon that I mained in World for my first playthrough. It's the weapon that I beat World for the first time with, um, and that was my first Monster Hunter game. So it holds a special place in my heart. Uh, it's not a weapon that I used at all in Rise, so I'm definitely rusty on it. But to me, I personally enjoyed World's version of Charge Blade a little bit more than Rise. Um... Which is weird to say because Charge Blade definitely has some really cool things going for it. Um, but, like, one of the big things, obviously, is focus mode. So you can land your SAEDs. There's not a lot of guesswork when you're doing your big Charge Blade attacks. Same thing for Greatsword. You can line those up and kind of make sure that they hit. Um, and one thing that is definitely nice uh, about Charge Blade in uh, ri or, sorry, Wilds is it feels a little bit easier to do all of the file management and charging up the sword and charging up the shield and getting your full files. Like that full process felt smoother to me. Uh, the thing that doesn't feel smoother is actually getting out SADs and the like impact of it, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, if you have your shield fully charged and you have your weapon, uh, or if you have your full shield fully charged and all of your files in your charge blade, uh, I was finding that you still weren't able to actually do SAEDs. Uh, basically, you needed to either do a guard point to activate a full attack or fully buff up with the sword, which I don't think you needed to do in uh, World. So you're doing a lot of uh aeds which you know to me don't feel quite as good um and so charge blade very cool weapon most complicated weapon uh and i'm sure once we get some of the perks for it it's gonna feel better uh but to me just feeling a little bit worse in wilds next up we've got switch axe uh switch axe probably gonna be putting it in improved you could put it in similar to world uh the big thing with switch axe is it was a full offensive weapon it's a weapon that you really just had to go ham with uh you didn't have any defensive capabilities on you could probably go for some like evade extenders um on world gameplay it's not a weapon i use too much with but now that switch x has a counter its biggest weakness is being improved uh so i feel like it has to go with the improved category in terms of its actual move set and like spamming your like discharge uh that loop is still there it's still really strong it's still really satisfying um but the fact that it's getting a counter now seems a lot better now we get to hunting horn um now i'm gonna be honest this is the weapon that i have the least experience with and i did a hunt on hunting horn in wilds and it felt awesome to me someone who hasn't played hunting horn much uh the song seemed pretty easy to get out uh you can do the like big uh, like echoes where now all of the damage that you're doing within your echo is getting echoed out into an AOE and it's for like 40% of the damage that you're dealing and you can stack the echoes up. So if you plan a monster topple, you can put those echoes down and deal big damage with the hammer. Uh, the play style was very satisfying and timing everything like in terms of just weapon feel, it felt great. Uh, and the fact that we now have weapon swapping with, uh, uh, wilds so that you can have two weapons and you can apply like an attack up buff to you and then swap to your main weapon uh, i think makes hunting horn feel really good uh but 
as someone who like is very new, uh, I've talked to a few people and I've been told by my Twitch chat that hunting horn is feeling worse to people who are hunting horn mains, uh, mais mainly because you're like kind of spinning attack. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in world where you could kind of like spin the hammer over a monster's head and just dish out some ridiculous amounts of damage, that playstyle is all but gone, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so, you know, say, I think if you haven't played too much uh, of like Hunting Horn in the past, to me, felt really good. Uh, but to a lot of the Hunting Horn mains that I've heard from, it's not feeling quite as good. Uh, so, yeah. Just kind of putting it in slightly worse for now. I uh, could put it in similar world to kind of like even it out. But yeah, that is Hunting Horn. Guys, that is going to do it for our tier list of improved weapons. Obviously, the beta is out right now. So if you haven't played with any of these weapons, I strongly encourage you to download it. Uh, it's free to play. You can get a feel for the weapons and make your own decisions, which I think is really important because obviously all of these weapons will play and feel different to different players depending on your play styles. And also, this is without any of the perks that we're going to get and all of the quality of life that's going to come from our armor uh, and the like synergistic perks that weapons will get we don't even know if we're going to unlock new moves and things like that like we did in rise later on for the weapons um so just kind of an initial impressions and feeling out the weapons after doing a hunt on every single one i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you found it informative let me know if you'd like to see more monster hunter content um and i will catch you all in the next one guys take care peace